ಪುಣ್ಯಸಾಧನೆಭ್ಯೋ ಹಿ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾನ್ಮೋಕ್ಷೈಕಸಾಧನ ಪಾಕಸ್ಯವಾಹ್ನಿ ವಾಜ್ಞಾನ ವಿನಾ ಮೋಕ್ಷೋ ನ ಸಿಧ್ಯತಿ ಪೌಢ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಅನ್ಯಸಾಧನೆಭ್ಯ ಇನ್ ಕಂಪಾರಿಸನ್ ವಿತ್ ಅದರ್ ಕಂಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಟೋರಿ ಕಾಸಸ್ he indeed sakshat direct moksha ek sadhanam the one means of liberation hakasya for cooking vahinivat just as the fire jnanam realized knowledge vina without moksha ha liberation na not siddhyati to be accomplished as fire is the direct cause of cooking so knowledge and not any other form of discipline is the direct cause of liberation for liberation cannot be attained without knowledge namaste so if you want liberation you have to have knowledge the good example is a traveler before going on a journey has to have a map he has to know where he's going what routes he's taking where to turn what the difference or distance is between rest stops and so on but the map is not the journey so there is also a distinction between the knowledge and the application of the knowledge the theory and the practice now in this shloka there are two words that are used for knowledge one is bodha and the other is gnana what's the difference bodha is a synonym of vidya and vidya generally means scriptural knowledge book knowledge verbal or symbolic knowledge now this is equivalent to the map but gnana is realized knowledge experiential knowledge knowledge of the actual thing that is described in the scriptures and that's a whole different thing which can only be reached by practice knowledge is very highly valued in the vedic tradition and especially in the tradition of the upanishads just as an experiment i did a search in shankara's upanishad and bhagavad gita commentaries how often or how many times he uses the word knowledge here's a video showing doing a search for knowledge the word knowledge in shankara acharya's bhagavad gita commentary and you can see as the search proceeds down the left hand side the red bars show the location of the occurrences of the word knowledge and in the upper right in the search box the total gradually increases increments all the way up to 700 i had another book which is full of shankara's non-scriptural works his poems and so on and in those books the word knowledge occurs 766 times and we can assume that the other works of shankara the scriptural commentaries on the different upanishads are similar shankara acharya is all about knowledge and in this verse the beginning of the teaching of knowledge is given that only by knowledge can we attain liberation what kind of knowledge both kinds in the beginning the map is necessary but also the journey is necessary see theoretical knowledge tells us what to do how to do it but then we have to do it do what is necessary 
do whatever is necessary to reach the goal. That is the kind of commitment that is necessary to attain liberation because it requires a total commitment, a total engagement of our resources. So this is not a plaything. This is not a kid's game. This is a life and death obsession. That's how it has to be. Nothing can stand in the way of the process or the journey to liberation. If you allow any of the obstructions or obstacles to stop you, you won't reach the goal. So I've been fairly fanatical about this in my life. Every time I had a chance to choose between ordinary life, ordinary relationships, ordinary knowledge, and things like money and security and so on, I chose self-realization instead. And that's why I am here talking to you about this and able to give you this knowledge or share with you my experience in obtaining the knowledge. And a very important part of the knowledge is approaching a realized teacher. Because if you read these books on your own, like I have one friend, an Indian guy living in New Jersey, <laughs> near where I grew up, and he has tons of misunderstandings about the scriptures. And the reason is that he never went back and cleared up his misunderstood terminology from his education. Indian education give you tons of misunderstood words, even in the native language, because they insist on rote memorization instead of actual applied knowledge, practical knowledge. So he's so confused. I told him to go back and clear up his misunderstood terms, but, you know, he's probably not going to do it. <laughs> People don't believe me when I tell them this. But see, this is part of epistemology. Epistemology is the science of how we obtain knowledge. And in Vedic knowledge, of course, we have to take shelter of the scriptures. But the scriptures are difficult. They contain archaic terminology from languages that are pretty much out of use today. Sanskrit, and so on. So how do we understand them, and how do we clear up our misunderstandings? We have to have someone check us and examine our understanding and correct it when we're wrong. This is the teacher. This is the guru. This is the realized soul who compassionately is willing to sit with us and go through our understanding, question our comprehension, and see where it falls short or where it goes off the mark. So this is absolutely necessary. And I was so fortunate in this regard. I've had five realized teachers in my life, beginning with my Adi Guru back in 1971, and all the way up to my sannyas guru uh, about five years ago in Tiruvannamalai. So I've been very, very fortunate to have several enlightened spiritual masters. And the reason I got that opportunity is that I was willing to drop everything and go to them and learn from them. And if you're not willing to do this, you're going to get a second-rate or third-rate knowledge. Because, as I said, getting knowledge from books is very limited. You will misunderstand it. I can't count the number of things that I got wrong just from reading the scriptures. Huh? And my guru, my Adi guru, was a very accomplished author. He knew how to use words scientifically, precisely, with their exact definitions. 
he used to look up words in the dictionary all the time and make sure he was using exactly the right terminology. But still, even so, reading his books, I made so many mistakes in understanding, in comprehension. So he had to correct them. He had to teach me, or my experience had to teach me, because I would try something and fall flat on my face. And then only after repeated attempts, I would, by pure accident, get it right and realize, oh, I had misunderstood it from the start. So this process is a lifelong thing, and the teacher can shorten it tremendously by giving you personal feedback. That's what's required, and we'll see later on in this work. The relationship between the student and the teacher, the disciple and the guru, is explained. But right now, we have to understand we need knowledge, not ordinary knowledge, knowledge of duality, but spiritual knowledge, transcendental knowledge, knowledge of the self. That's bodha, the theoretical part, and jnana, the practical or realized part. So by gaining this knowledge, we will attain enlightenment because the only thing separating us from Brahman, from Turiya, from self-realization is ignorance. What is ignorance? It is thinking that duality is real. It's not real. We all have heard the example of the rope and the snake. Well, duality is the snake. It only appears to be real because we don't have a clear vision of the object. As soon as someone brings a light, we see, oh, it's not a snake, it's a rope. So as soon as someone brings knowledge, we realize, oh, the duality is false. It's not real. Only Brahman is real. Only the self is real. And I am that self, Brahman. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.